Hi everyone, welcome to our webinar on business best practices when using your Miro portal. My name is Shannon, VP of Business Development here at Miro Global Tracking. So we're going to take a look at some things sort of behind the scenes in the portal that are very important. And we'll use the tabs across the top that you're accustomed to using to sort of guide us through. So first of all, we're going to go into the Vehicles tab. And what some may not realize is that in the Vehicles tab, we store important information and you can store important information about vehicles. So if we go down to any vehicle and we click in the blue on its name, we have a lot of information there. Everything from the make and model of the vehicle, the year, the license plate, uh, the VIN number, any type of vehicle information like that that you want to keep. We also have beacon information below. We can change the icon here on the map, the icon that will show up when you're using map view. If you notice that any of this information was incorrect or you wanted to update it, you would use the edit button here. We also here can keep photos. So we can keep photos of the vehicle for ver verifying the condition of a vehicle before or after someone's using it. And you can also keep a picture of the driver. You can see one of our drivers here is known for monkeying around, so we keep a close eye on him. <laughs> Now, when we uh, are in the Vehicles tab, we can also do what we call a live track. Now, many of you are used to the map view, which we access here at home, the map view where we can bring up one or any number of vehicles and it updates every minute. But in the Vehicles tab is where we can live track any one vehicle. So we would move, we would go to the vehicle that we wanted, we would move along, to track and that would give us an exact location with speed, direction, live tracking of that vehicle updating every 15 seconds. Now when we move across to the maintenance tab and the maintenance part of the portal is an extremely valuable part of the portal and if you'd like further help with the maintenance section of the portal. We have videos, we can work with you one-on-one, -on -one. we have webinars, and we're here to help you with that. But what I want to talk today as far as best practices is notifications. So if you have set up a schedule for any particular service, and a schedule meaning basically how often that's going to be done, and if we remind everyone, What's important is that in the notification for that is that we have somebody notified. So if you have an inappropriate person being notified or maybe someone that's no longer even with the company, then that's not making the full use of it. So we want to make sure that you use the notifications to their best effect. Now when we move over into reports, uh, most of you are used to using the reports on a regular basis, but you, what you may not know is that you can set up what we call scheduled reports. Setting up a scheduled report takes minutes or seconds, and what that does is automatically generates reports without you having to physically decide to go and pull one. So for example, instead of saying, I'm going to go in and pull a stock report and remembering periodically to do that, you can set that up. We go into scheduled reports here and we would say new scheduled report and you could have that automatically generated every day or every week. Now while we're on the topic of scheduled reports, what's really important to know about is backing up your data. Because as you know, our system has the capability to hold data for up to four months, which is a healthy amount of time. But sometimes you want to investigate something that's happened prior to that. So backing up your data is where we set up generally a generic email. So in our case, we might set up reports at neuroglobal.com. You could set up a generic email. Uh, at even a Gmail account, 
and have those reports automatically generated into there every day or every week. So that right now, I would be able to go back to a stock report from, say, five or six or seven months ago and look at information. And several of the reports can be scheduled. Now, the backing up your data, there is a webinar all about doing that on our website, and you can also give us a call to help you with that. Now, we're going to move along to the Administration tab, and we've saved some of the most important for last. Under the Administration tab, first of all, we have Scenarios, and again, regarding notification. So if we have a speed alert, and we make use of notifying someone, so I go down here to Notifications, you want to make sure that you have the right or appropriate person notified, and you'll notice that you have a choice of email or text. Okay, now, also under administration, we have users. And it's very important that each user has their own uh, unique password. So, for example, when I go into John Smith, we want to make sure that John has a password that he has created himself. Because anyone that knows John Smith, and knows his email, so they let's say they know him, and they know his email is john at neuroglobal.com, and he keeps a password that's something like J. Smith, something very obvious, then anybody could be logging in and seeing what's happening in your company. So what you're going to do is when you have any new user, including when you're first set up with us, you're going to go in there and change it. You will notice that, like many of the banks and large corporations, we have gone to a system where your email address can be your login, and that has been shown to drastically reduce uh, the cases of people forgetting their login. So again, to do that, all we did was in the users, so we're under the administration tab, users, and we just click right on the name. Now, the other thing that's very important is that all employees have their own individual logins. So, number one, you can run a login summary report and see uh, when and if people have been logging in. But secondly, when you have a whole bunch of people, like we've heard of cases with two or three people and they're all logging in as John Smith, well then when one of those people leaves the company, then the password needs to be changed for all of the people and they all need to remember the password. The better system is we would go into users and we would say John Smith is no longer with our company so we click the box which is selecting him and we're simply saying delete. Are you sure we want to delete this user? Yes we do, okay. And he has been deleted. Now the last thing that we're going to talk about in the administration tab is user groups. You will notice, and we've got a perfect example here with us, uh, sorry, when I go back here to users, do you see how we have a lot of employees and they're all administrators, and I've done that for demonstration. What you want to make use of is user groups. User groups not only are an excellent way to organize users, but they decide or, or determine the permissions of those users. So each user is in a user group, and it is the user group that determines what can be done. So let's look at some examples there. If I go into the clerical user group, and I decide to put some people in there, those people do clerical work, and all they need to do is run reports. Conversely, if I go into maintenance, the maintenance people are going to be in charge of the maintenance of the vehicles, and all they need to be able to do is use maintenance. They don't need to manage other people's permissions and passwords. They don't need to be able to locate or track and use the map view. Again, we'll look at one more example. Let's say you have office people, 
and maybe unlike clerical, they don't need to just run reports, but maybe they also need to locate. And then of course your administrator, and it's typically one person is in that group, administrators can do everything and manage permission and change other people's passwords for them and all of that. So the use of user groups is a great way, as I said, to organize people and to have different permissions for different groups. And it's a really useful way to do that. So we've covered a lot of the sort of behind the scenes things, things that you're not using every day, but that are really valuable parts of the portal and that are very quickly set up. And we are here to help you at any time. If you have any questions at all about any of these topics or anything else, we look forward to hearing from you, and we will be dealing with each of these topics in further webinars more in depth. So thank you very much for joining us, and please don't hesitate to contact us.